Jumping back into the action now here for our last segment on today's show. Just going through part two of the game picks that we have coming up on Sunday. We got through part one already talking about the first half of it. But because we are recording this show in advance, we can't go through both parts in separate days. So we're going to talk about part two now and getting to our picks for the other half of the games here. So looking at the other games now that we have on Sunday... Starting off with the Houston Texans and the Jacksonville Jaguars, it's the second game between both of these AFC North rivals. The first game, it was only 24-20, to but they had Trevor Lawrence playing. Now with Trevor Lawrence looking like he's going to miss the rest of the year with that shoulder injury and all the, you know, the, the comments about whether or not they're going to move on from Doug Peterson and things like that and just things not looking great right now for the Jaguars on top of their bad record as well. Um... You know, it, it it is leaning more towards the Texans. But in the same breath, you know, the Texans are showing some signs of, of slippage, right? We had last week against the Titans where they probably should have won that game. Even in this game as well, it, it took a last-second touchdown by uh, C.J. Stroud to win this game overall. So there is a little bit of like, eh, like I don't really know there. But um, the Jaguars are also coming off of their bye, but they lost 52-6 to to Detroit before that. So even still with the Texans still figuring things out, um, I'm still going to go with Houston. Um, Houston have an opportunity here to get back on track against one of the worst run defenses in the NFL as well. So after Mixon had a down performance, I'm going to go and bank on him to, to rebound off of that. So I'm going to go with the Texans in this game. Then, just going down one more row, we have the Arizona Cardinals against the Minnesota Vikings. A very interesting game here because the Cardinals are technically battling with the Vikings for a wild card spot, even though the Vikings have a, a, a lot better record than they do. Um, it would definitely help in the Cardinals' chase to, to get into the wild card, but Arizona's coming off of a very disappointing performance last week against Seattle, only putting up six points. And they lost the, the first place spot in the division. But also, not only did they drop out of that spot, but they dropped completely out of the playoffs. They sit at number 8 right now as things stand. So, um, it is a spot where you know there has to be the, the maximum amount of urgency showed because of that fact you don't want to just be left out completely. And you're, you're facing a very tough Minnesota defense. And at home, they're playing a lot better. They have just been playing better in general um and you know minnesota is also coming into this one with a, a little win streak here despite a nail-biting win over the chicago bears they just continue to find ways to win and even though justin jefferson you know as kind of like an anomaly not really playing to his standards you know they have the talent in tj hawkinson in jordan addison in aaron jones who who's had played a bigger role recently, and even Jalen Naylor scoring a couple touchdowns. They have a lot of talent to just still play great, despite the fact that everyone's focusing on Justin Jefferson. And with all of that being said, I know Arizona's going to play better. I expect them to play better. Um, but it's against another tough defense. They're very good against the run, and the Cardinals just really struggled running at all against the the Seattle Seahawks. And I think the the, the Vikings have a better run defense than they do. So I think it's going to be too much to ask for from Arizona. Um, I feel like they're going to have around the same success in the running game. And the the offense just for Minnesota, unless Sam Darnold just drops an absolute like awful performance, I think they just have too much to, to deal with. They could focus on Justin Jefferson all they want, and they're going to have to double team him. Jordan Addison's playing great. TJ Hawkinson's owning the middle of the field. And Aaron Jones is playing very well. So give me the Minnesota Vikings. I think it's just going to be too much for the Arizona Cardinals. And then we go to one more game down on the left-hand side. And we have the Titans playing against the Washington Commanders. And I think this is a very misleading game because uh, you look at how the, the Commanders lost last week, right? Very miraculous. Very just... Un, unlikely for a game to ever end like that, but it did, and they ended up on the wrong end of it. And then you look at the Tennessee Titans coming in with a 3-8 and eight record, you know, not really much to play for, but they just defeated the Houston Texans on the road as well. And, you know, Washington just looked a little bit like, like tired or 
it, it just feels like the long season is playing a toll on them, especially Jaden Daniels, who is currently in the longest season, um, I'm sure, of his entire football career without really having a break with the draft and the combine and everything like that. Um, I think it's starting to show a little bit here, and the offense really hasn't looked that efficient overall. And um, Tennessee's defense is also number, number what was it, five or six in terms of passing yards allowed and number eight in rushing yards allowed as well. Their defense is pretty underrated. We, they saw, we saw it last week when they completely just neglected and just negated, actually, I should say, Joe Mixon from the game. He only had like 22 rushing yards. And the running, the running game is a big part of the commander's offense to keep things in motion, to keep things in a fluid you know, sort of rhythm. So because of that... Um, I, I think I'm going to go with the Titans here. They also have not really too much to play for also. So the Commanders, I'm sure, are starting to feel a little bit tight about like, all right, we've dropped a couple games here. we got to start winning these games, right? And it's a new year, new era with, you know, Dan Quinn and Jaden Daniels obviously coming in there. They want to be in the playoffs and they want to prove all these people wrong. But I'm sure they're starting to feel a little bit of that pressure and I'm not quite sure that they're ready to kind of respond. So I'm going to go with the Titans here, surprising everyone yet again and winning on the road against the Washington Commanders. And now it allows us to move to the other side of things, right? We have the Tampa Bay Buccaneers going up against the uh, Carolina Panthers. Another tricky game as well because um, you look at the, the Buccaneers here and it is a little bit just misleading a little bit just because the Bucs are in a spot where, you know, they they have to win most of their games. They have to win the rest of their games, right, to get in the playoffs. But they've also dropped a couple, so it is a tough spot to be in. But they are still fighting for that spot. And it's the first meeting between both of these two teams. And Carolina showed a little bit of something last week against Kansas City. Bryce Young is looking to, to be playing a lot better for, for overcoming, you know, being benched and, and everything like that, especially after... A rough first year so even despite all of that I thought Tampa Bay despite playing the Giants also I it felt like they looked rejuvenated and with Mike Evans coming back also and Baker Mayfield playing at a good level I'm gonna go with the Bucks. I, I think maybe the Carolina Panthers keep it close for a little bit but still I'm gonna go with the Buccaneers to win on the road then you get another game that's pretty misleading as well with the Rams traveling to New Orleans to take on the, the Saints. The Saints are 2-0 and currently under their new head coach, Darren Rizzi, and they've played a lot better at home this year as well. So the Rams are coming in desperate to, to win because they have a tough slate of games coming up in their division, obviously, but also against Buffalo that I feel like would favor Buffalo because, you know, just the way the Bills are playing right now, they're, they're on a different level than I think most teams. So this is a game that the Rams need to win if they ha- want to have any true shot at making the playoffs. So they need this win. And I feel like, despite my sort of doubts a little bit, I feel like they should have enough on both sides to win this game overall and just kind of outscore the Saints, if anything, on the road here. So give me the Rams in this game. I'm going to go with them to keep pace in that playoff race. And then lastly, you want to talk about misleading this game should be a top tier you know level of game right up there with Philadelphia and uh the Ravens this week but I don't really think it's going to be that close um I've been really disappointed with San Francisco this year um even when they're healthy I I think there's something just like missing or there's something wrong with this team overall of course Christian McCaffrey's come back but it's not really fair in my opinion, to, to expect him to just jump in into mid-season form. So there's a little bit of that, you know, Christian's still trying to get back into it, but there's the injury to Brandon Ayuk, which obviously has taken a bigger toll on them than originally expected. So it's been pretty disappointing from the 49ers. I believe they're 5-6 and six right now. And, um, you know, you look at the Bills also on the other side. They're playing like one of the best teams in the NFL. And the fact that this game's in Buffalo... The Bills have not lost yet at Buffalo. They're 5-0, and while the 49ers are 2-3 and on the road. And on top of that, the 49ers have not even been a team 
over 500 until this point. And I don't think that's going to change going into Sunday. Give me the Buffalo Bills. They're probably going to win by at least, I would say, 10 points or, or two touchdowns at least. I think that's how much of a difference there is right now, unfortunately, between these two teams. And it's going to take a big you know effort from the 49ers to even be close in this game. So I think it's just too much stacked against them. So I'm going to go with the Bills. And with that being said, that does it for today's episode of the Chip Shot Football Podcast. Thank you guys for listening to today's show. Please remember to like, follow, and subscribe to the show, as well as following the network on all forms of social media. Make sure to check out both YouTube channels as well, the GSMC Podcast Network channel and the GSMC Sports Network channel for more content around the Chip Shot Football Podcast. And also, don't forget to join each and every live show each weekday at 6 p.m. Eastern Time for more coverage on the NFL breaking news, stories, breakdowns, everything that there is to know about the NFL with me, Manny Maradiege, as your host. Thank you guys for watching. I hope you guys have a great Thanksgiving, and I'll see you guys back here next week on Monday. Let's go. I wake up to a little bit of drool on my pillow, feel like it's gonna be a bad day. Yeah, I'm tired of shit, and the coffee ain't hit yet. Damn, ain't that great? I don't wanna go to.